There was a moment that we were asked to create our own version of Carpool Karaoke. I'll talk about it a little bit more in depth after this. Hi, I'm Paul Schmidt. I'm the owner and creative video strategist for Introduce Multimedia. And on this behind the camera, we go back to 2016. I believe it was the fall of 2016. And the client we were working with was the Youth Ministry Network and their, their annual event is called the Extravaganza in which over the years I've played numerous parts in in the development of the programming for that event. One of the things that we typically do are, I shouldn't say typically, but more occasionally is we pre-produce things for the live aspect of the event because I was, also um, part of the main stage, what they call the main stage crew that puts on the special keynotes and, and uh, uh, presentations during the annual event. Now I have to admit, the folks that I work with on this event in this group are highly creative and they know exactly what they want completed and how they want to implement it. And so what they wanted to do was have their own version of carpool karaoke developed for this specific event. So they roped in three artists from the Minneapolis, Minnesota area, uh, Dave Shearer, otherwise known as Agape, Rachel Kurtz, and Joe Davis. And so they had me come out to Minneapolis to create this short little video. However, short video highly complicated. For anyone that's seen Carpool Karaoke, you see the driver and the passenger. What you don't see are camera people. We had to outfit the van, all with GoPros, inside and out, as well as making sure we also had wirelessly recorded audio, um, which I took two shotguns shotgun mics and attach them to the ceiling so that everyone could be heard. Um, and, and then everything was wirelessly recorded, the, Go, the GoPros and the audio recording. I asked a friend of mine, Walter Riggi of Riggi Media in Windsor, Canada, because he did a version of this for his own production company and we walked through how he did it and what I needed to do. The scary part of this was that as soon as the cameras were strapped in, started recording and the audio situation was strapped in, started recording, I couldn't be in the van. And I couldn't monitor it. We didn't have, you know, the budget at that point in time, this is 2016, to watch multiple wireless can cameras to see if they're all doing what they have to do. So this is by, God's grace that all of this stuff came together. And so we did several different passes and we were able to record everything and it was all running and it went well and it was a big hit for the event. We were really pleased at how it turned out. I mean, obviously there were some things that we wish we could have adjusted, but at the same time, it was amazing to me that, <laughs> that that we were, we were able to make this work and work flawlessly without having to re-record or anything like that, but we used the same same style of GoPros. Um, and I think that was like really the last major thing we did with GoPros. You should check it out, check out the whole video. A link to that will be in the description uh, so that you can check that video out and see for yourself how it went, but it was a big success at the event and folks are still talking about it and wanted to bring your attention to that. And uh, thank you for, for watching this edition of Behind the Camera. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure that you subscribe to our email as well as the blog so you don't miss any of these really cool behind the scenes stories of what we're doing. And stay tuned for the next Behind the Camera.